The 29-year-old has chosen the life of a beach bum in this seaside paradise. With no fixed address, Jason has, for the last couple of years, floated from place to place, staying with family, pals, and girls he's dated. This is a nice day today, though, huh? He gets by with a little help from his friends and you, the taxpayer. That was California surfer Jason Greenslate, who we cannot get enough of in the office. He's the man Fox News has so successfully cast as the face of food stamp decadence. The network staffers helpfully distributed clips from its August special centered on Greenslate, the great food stamp binge, to members of the House. And House Majority Leader Eric Cantor encouraged his allies to spotlight the surfer to justify the $39 billion in cuts to food stamp program the House GOP passed earlier this month. Congressional Budget Office says the bill would cost an estimated 3.8 million people their food stamp eligibility in the first year if it's signed into law. Cantor sent a memo to fellow Republicans asking them to consider how newscasts tell stories of young surfers who aren't working but cash their food stamps in for lobster. His fellow Republicans took it from there. Here's Representative Andy Harris on the House floor last Thursday before the vote. This is a common sense reform that cuts waste, fraud and abuse, leaving more money for the Americans who truly need help in time of need. What the heck does that graphic say? I don't even know. All right. At the heart of the Republican argument is this idea that the use of food stamps has exploded because people have been lulled into shiftless dependence by an overly generous government. It's all lottery winners and dead people and surfer dudes mooching off the public. Yet, according to the USDA, only 1.3 percent of total food stamp benefits were illegally trafficked between 2009 and 2011. And much of the trafficking that does go on involves desperate people trading their benefits to store owners for a very expensive cash advance. And while the food stamp program has grown rapidly, with one-sixth of the country now receiving it, that has far more to do with the lingering effects of the Great Recession than the sloth of the American people or the policy decisions of the Obama administration. Nearly half of households headed by females with children under five in this country right now live in poverty. In 2010, 75% of food stamp households include a child, a person age 60 or older, or a disabled person. So while House Republicans want America to stay focused on this guy, today's headlines give us the perfect counter. News that dancer and choreographer Kyle Abraham, who was on food stamps just three years ago, was officially awarded a so-called genius grant by the MacArthur Foundation. Kyle will receive a no-strings-attached $625,000 stipend to follow his vision. And while Kyle says he still needs to raise money for his dance company, he now has the freedom to make art without fear of going hungry. We await the one-hour Fox News documentary on his life. But in the meantime, joining me now is Kyle Abraham, the dancer-choreographer and newly named MacArthur Fellow. Mr. Genius, if I can call you that, congratulations. Thanks so much. How does this feel? What does this mean for your work? Oh, man, it's crazy. Um, I, I can't even begin to kind of get into how blessed I feel, you know, just knowing that I can pay off my student loans, which are just insane. There's probably $180,000 in student loans from graduate school and undergraduate school. Um, thinking about paying my rent and thinking about all that I can do for my company. You know, we just started trying to get health care for my company. So knowing that that's going to be in place and there's some cushion there that those times when we're not able to tour as much as we normally would, we have that cushion to help support that as well. Three years ago, you were on the SNAP program. Um, tell me about the circumstances that led you to, the, to go on to food stamps. Sure. I think for me, it was a really hard time. You know, I was actually touring a good deal, but mostly as a solo artist and doing a lot of commissioned work. So dance companies or colleges might call me and ask me to make a, a dance for them. But there's a, definitely a lot of time when I'm trying to spend money on the company and trying to make sure that I can support and provide for my dancers as much as possible so we can create work as much as possible and tour um, when, whenever possible. Um, but I think it was that. And also thinking about my father, who at the time was... Uh, um, needing a lot of care and trying to figure out how I can help out my family and eat a meal and pay the student loans. It was just so hard and really stressful for me to try and do all of those things um, and make art at the same time. And you and you were only on for less than a year and then you moved out yes. of it, which is what most recipients um, are on for a temporary amount of time. What do you, What is your reaction when you see this kind of caricature that's been created of these kind of lazy moochers who are getting one over on the taxpayer? 
Well, I think ultimately, I don't know his story, and I think that's that's actually the message there is that you don't really know people's stories, yeah. um, and I think the government really needs to probably get to know the individual a little bit more before they can take something away from them. And I think a lot of people are actually ashamed to ask for help. Um, so it's it's such a huge step for people to try and take that step, knowing that ultimately no one wants to to have a handout for the rest of their lives. People want to be able to know that they can provide for themselves. What does it mean that you have been able to essentially get through periods of real economic hardship and be able to follow your passion, your vision, and your genius, if I could use the word, <laughs> and now be on the other side of that rainbow? Oh, man, I think I'm just... I'm just, it keeps me to stay humble. I think that's really what it is. Um, I'll, I'll never forget where I came from and where I'm still trying to get to. Uh, I think the, the irony is that, you know, this is a six year thing that I'll be kind of undergoing, but, you know, I need to make sure that I'm constantly keeping a, um, an eye on where the money's going so that we can kind of build some kind of stability for our company and sustainability so we can have a long, a long career as a dance company. Kyle Abraham, congratulations on your fellowship. It's great news, and thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much.